Hey guys, this is Jake with my Bring Back, and today we're gonna learn a little bit about variables. Stay tuned, this is super important. Hey guys, so mosey on over to jsbin.com, and that's where we'll be using and coding in this online interface. All right, so variables, what are they? First, I mean, the very first thing that you guys have to understand is variables hold information. And this is very crucial to what they call object-oriented programming. And if you don't know what that is, we'll get into it a little bit later as far as what and why it's important for you guys. So they're going to hold information. That's great. What, is, uh, what does that mean to us? So let's, let's break it down to a simple concept that everyone should learn, or if you haven't learned it yet, you will. And that's algebra. All right, so algebra is something like x plus y equals 11. All right, and in algebra, they may give you one of the variables, as in I'm going to say variables as one of the components. Is let's just say six. So we know that x equals x plus six equals eleven. Essentially, this x here is a variable. It's a placeholder for information. All right, and so we're going to bring that into our concept of what does that mean for programming and the object-oriented abilities. All right. So in this case, we knew that x equals 5. And essentially, once you know that information, x is now our variable. And we know that the value assigned to it is 5. All right? So what we're going to do is jump into a quick example and then explain that example as to why it's important for the programming of JavaScript. And so the very first thing that we have to do is we have to cre create a variable. All right? In usually it's referenced to as declaring a variable and so how you declare a variable is you write var in the javascript language and that basically tells our programmer our compiler that hey a variable is gonna is gonna follow this var we're gonna establish or declare a variable in this case and a variable it could be as simple as like x like we did in the algebra example or it could be something like car or it could be something like name or anything like that. Now, there's a couple rules to the naming of variables, and I'm going to get into those real quick as a side note. They have to begin with either a letter, and it doesn't matter if it's N or N, it is case sensitive, by the way, or a dollar sign, or the only other one that it can be is an underscore. Okay? So it can't start with a number and uh, you name the variable that. So in this case, we're just going to type out name. All right, so we're going to keep it simple and keep in mind, like I said, they are case sensitive. So if you have another variable in its name, name with a capital N, that's going to be completely different from this variable up here, which is a lowercase n. All right, so that's the, the difference in case sensitive. So we got name and we're going to set our variable. Well, actually, we're just going to establish our variable in this case. Okay, and then what I, what I want you to do is write this statement document.write. And in this case, we have a string, but we're going to turn this to our variable name. All right, so now what it does is it outputs this long string of information, and we realize that we haven't defined or put anything into this name variable. Most of the time, it's going to show up as undefined, but our program JSBin is telling us, hey, we got a string of numbers for some reason. Okay, so now what I want you to do is go to the next line. We're going to write name equals, and we're going to put in a string. So we're going to start it with a semicolon, we're going to write Jake, and we're going to end it with a semicolon. All right? So now we have name equals our string, which is Jake, and now you'll see our output has changed from that string of numbers, which we didn't even know what the heck was that, you know, what, what's going on, to Jake, all right? So now we have our variable here is declared, and then we're assigning a value to it. In this case, it's Jake, my name and we're going and we're writing it to the screen okay so now our output is now Jake now you notice that we never had to change our document.write we never had to change what was gonna output to the screen because we basically changed the variable and the variable was already associated to the document.write so that gives us what we call the object oriented program it gives us a little bit of flexibility with our objects and in this case the variable all right, so let's go ahead and change this name to Harry. And you'll see automatically our output changes to Harry, okay? 
So now you see some of the, the ins and outs where we can get around and program some sweet stuff, all right, without having to go and like change each individual instance of this particular variable, all right. Now I'm going to show you something pretty quick as far as assigning values. Now in this case we declared it and then we assign the value. What I'm going to show you is on the same line how we're going to do the, the exact same thing. All right. So we're going to do var name and in this case we're just going to go ahead and assign the value right away. All right. So you'll see we have var name and we set the or assign the value to Jake and we get the same result. Now here's another thing that we can do is we can assign multiple um, variables within the same line. So we could go name Jake age equals 24 and we'll go uh, sex equals male. Alright, so now we have three different variables set up. We have name, we have age, and we have sex set up in the same line. Okay, so it's very quick, very efficient to set these things up. Now going back to the variables and some of the you know ins and outs of variables is you can assign basically two data types that we're gonna go into today at least. And one of them is our string that we already did of my name. The other one is numbers, okay? And you'll see that I don't have any quotations or any or anything around the number, okay? But it is set to that value because the numbers we don't actually have to consider a string with the quotations around it, okay? So we can do strings and, and numbers in this particular case, and we'll get into some other, other types that we can do later on. But for now, strings and numbers. So we've got three different variables set up, and right now we're displaying our name variable. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this, and I'll just show you for the sake of showing you. We'll change this and display our age as well, okay? So now we should have, yeah, Jake, and it's going to display my age as well. All right, so we can reverse engineer this, and we can take this all out, like I was saying. And we can take this and basically duplicate it, have multiple lines, go var name equals, and in this case, we're just going to change this to the variable name age, and we'll take out the string, and we'll put in the number again for 24. All right, so the same thing can be done in multiple ways. It just depends on you know where you're doing it and how you're doing it, and uh, moving forward with that. All right, so the very last thing that I want to show you is how we can use these variables on a very small scale. So we're going to take our variables x, you know, similar to the uh, algebra equation that we had earlier. And we're also going to declare and assign the value of y, and we'll just say five for this case. And then what we're going to do is we're going to establish another variable called sum. And we're going to set that equal to x plus y. So what we're going to do is basically simple math, and we're going to use the variables as placeholders to hold information and calculate those, all right? Because if we change the variables or we change the values assigned to the variables, we don't want to go into every equation to change that, all right? So we're going to go ahead and get rid of this because we don't really care about name and age at this point. But what we're going to do is display the sum variable. Okay, so essentially our sum is taking x plus y, so x plus y, 2 plus 4 is 6, and it displays it on the screen. All right, so we can do that with the divide, we can do that with multiply, all those things, but it just goes to show you how you can hold the data within a variable and update it in different ways, so you don't have to go through a page and, and uh, go into it. Hey guys, a very simple but mind-blowing exercise with variables within JavaScript. Look forward to seeing you guys next week.